Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to discuss sacral stress fractures. We're going to look at what causes them, um, what it feels like, and also what treatments work for that. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the phys physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want the link to our website. Okay, so what's the sacrum? Sacrum is the triangular shaped bone that's at the bottom of your spine. It forms part of your pelvis. So if I can show myself, it is just in that area, right at the bottom of the spine. Um, it has the two sacroiliac joints on its sides. Now, if you have a sacral stress fracture, it may present in quite a few different ways. It can just feel like back pain or glute pain. It can be a dull ache. It can be a really sharp pain that doesn't allow you to put weight through your leg. Um, and that's basically because it can come in different grades. So usually stress fracture starts as a, a stress reaction in the bone where there's no fracture line yet. It's just the bone that's starting to react and that's overworked. And if you can catch it at that time, at that point, it's quite quick to recover and quick to turn around. And often athletes, if they can be identified early on, can get back to their running or their sport within about six weeks. However, if you neglect that and keep on training and overloading it, then it can happen that it totally fractures, so the bone gets a break line. Now, that break line may just be seen as a line through the bone, but the bone's not displaced, but sometimes the bone can even shift. Now, the problem with this condition is, well, First of all, you must realize that this is not a common thing to get. So it's not the first thing to suspect if somebody comes in, tells you they've got lower back pain or they have glute pain. You have to do your full assessment and then decide from that what you think is the main cause for this pain. Now, if you decide that it's likely a gluteal tendinopathy or lower back pain or something like that, then make sure that you review your patient quite regularly so that if they're not responding to treatment as you feel they should, that you then consider sending them for MRI scan to rule out stress reactions in that area. Now, what it can feel like is most commonly, like I said, lower back pain or glute pain. It's not often that you'll get pain down the leg, although sometimes and quite commonly it can go together with a disc injury in the lower back. Now, if that's the case, you may actually get pain down the leg because you've got a back injury as well as a sacral injury then. So it's not always to say that you'll just have pain in that area. As to causes, it can be one of many factors that contributes to it, but it usually is a combination of overload plus the bone that has some issues that is not repairing as it should. So overload means there's just so much load of exercise going through that area that it starts, um, that it gives the bone an overuse injury. So it's typically your distance runners or people who does a high volume of volleyball or basketball or even wrestlers have been known to get this condition. Now, you're predisposed to it if you also have something that's affecting your bone health. So remember, our bones are really strong and healthy, but as we exercise, they also get micro damage because everything gets micro damage from exercise, but the body repairs that and that's how we grow stronger. If, however, something is stopping that repair process from happening, that's when you re get an overuse injury like a stress fracture. Now, things that can stop the bones from repairing is one, if you're not taking in enough energy to replace what you've burned. So, Typically, you see this in athletes who does high, high volumes of sport because it's really difficult to eat enough to replace all that energy. And the problem with that is that the body then goes into starvation mode. So it doesn't have enough energy to look after all the systems in the body. So it kind of prioritizes things. And that's why females then lose their menstruation because the body goes, well, we don't want to reproduce right now. We're just trying to survive. So I'm cutting off that. And that's one of the warning signs. If an athlete tells you, that they're not menstruating regularly or they have no menstruation, female athletes, of course, then you have to suspect that there could be a bone injury. So that would put it on a higher scale of suspicion for me. Other things that can cause bones to not heal properly is if you have a vitamin D deficiency. 
You can eat all the calcium in the world. If you don't have enough vitamin D in your body, you cannot actually absorb it and use it in your bones to strengthen it up. Then you may have a, a different hormone deficiency like thyroid hormones, which also affects the bone health. Um, what am I leaving out? So yeah, those are some of the some of the, the issues that can prevent your bones from healing. What they've shown in the research is they used to say that, oh, it's people with a BMI below, athletes with a BMI, BMI below 17 need to be on the watch for stress fractures. But actually, for this type of stress fracture, the research is suggesting that even BMIs between 19 and 21 could be a risk factor for that. So you shouldn't stare yourself blind against the person's BMI. You should be listening to how much they've trained recently and how good their nutrition is and also test the vitamin D and things like that. Now, like I said, this type of injury can feel very similar to a regular gluteal tendinopathy or lower back pain. And if it doesn't react like it should, you should suspect this and scan for it. Now, an x-ray is not useful. Even for complete fractures of the sacrum that's done through trauma, x-rays often miss a, a sacral fracture. MRI is the gold standard, and you can only say that you've ruled out a bone injury in the sacrum if you've done an MRI scan of the lower back and the pelvis. So that's important to know. Then, if it comes back that that is the issue, what do you do as treatment? Now, you have to treat this as a holistic thing. Yes, of course, there's the part where you have to offload um, the area. So if somebody has lots of pain walking, you need to give them crutches for a while until they can walk pain free. If they can walk pain free, it's just if they walk a bit too much that it hurts, then they can walk and they can start with low impact activities like swimming and cycling and um, cross training, even uh, running in the water. But it has to be a level that doesn't increase the pain or cause them pain. If it's causing them pain, you're not allowing the bone to settle. So it has to be at the right level. How long you've got to offload it for like that and take it slow will depend on how long they've had this injury for and how much it's advanced. If it's caught early and it's just a stress reaction in the bone where it's not actually fractured yet, then they could be back to running within six weeks. Most cases, it usually takes around 12 weeks or so to get back to full sport, but if it's a severe case and there's other factors involved, then it can take several months to get back to full sport. So it just depends on, um, on the situation in front of you. If you suspect that nutrition played a role, you have to send your athlete or refer them to a nutritionist because it's really important if they are somebody who likes endurance sports or a lot of activity, they need to understand how to fuel their body properly. Otherwise, Yes, a stress fracture is one of the injuries they can get, but they predispose to all sorts of injuries because the body can't repair itself properly. So that's really important. Um, if you find that maybe the person has a psychological element to eating dis disorders like anorexia or something like that, it's worth getting them help with that as well, because otherwise this process will just repeat itself. Um, definitely test the vitamin D. We're spending more and more time indoors, not getting enough sunshine. And when we are in the sun, we're putting sunblock on because we don't want to burn. So it's really important to check that vitamin D levels are um, at the right level. Um, then it may be worth running bloods to just check all the other hormones like thyroid hormones and make sure that they are all at the right level that they should be. With regards to strength training, Yes, it is important, but the offloading and slow return to sport is more important. Now, while you're recovering, you can do any exercise that does not cause you pain. So that means you can probably get on with core exercises. You may be able to do upper body stuff as well. Legs will depend on your situation. If you can do it pain free, you can continue with that. But just work with somebody and figure out what is right for you with regards to that. Um, what am I missing out here? No, that's basically it. So let me summarize. It's not a very common condition to get a stress fracture in the sacrum, but you have to suspect it if the person is not reacting to conservative treatment 
for whatever you've diagnosed them with and or they're getting worse um, especially if they have other risk factors that their bone density may not be brilliant then you need to think about having them scanned x-ray is not useful mri scan is the gold standard and then if it does come back positive you have to test their vitamin d levels and just check other hormone levels as well and get them to offload and slowly reload but respecting pain brilliant hope that was useful take care